Uh, you see one of the med units behind us. Uh, they actually just transported a patient uh, not long ago that was exhibiting signs and symptoms of COVID-19. We're averaging about anywhere from three, maybe four of those a day now. Uh, none of the patients we've transported have, have come back positive. Some are not even tested. And that's something we'll talk about in a minute. Uh, we've got one of our employees, firefighter EMT, uh, Courtney, who put on some of the PPE kind of to show you what if somebody comes to your house, the different ensemble about what you've not seen before, uh, probably with usually coming in in a uniform like I've got on, but also showing you how we're putting a product. We use BioS solution, which has a four minute kill time for the COVID-19 of putting it on our personnel once they're in their PPE before they make patient contact. Chico sprayed it on my arm, so <laughs> you can't see The sheriff's it. got some on, but he's protected he's now. Smelled. That way it assures us, even with the PPE on, we're giving a patient a mask. So if you call an ambulance to your, your residence, every patient is getting a mask with the exception of those that need oxygen. If you need oxygen, then we'll put you on the mask to be able to get the oxygen that you need for your particular condition. We're still asking if you've got a fever, flu-like symptoms, the hospital does not want you to come to the come to the ER for that. They're seeing a lot of patients for this and there's really nothing they're gonna do. Now, if you're having a medical emergency, associated chest pain, trouble breathing, then yes, call us and we do need to come and, and pick you up assess, or assess you, transport you to the hospital as we're doing some others. But even for the hospital, a lot of people's asking, I've been to the hospital, they're not testing me. If you come in with flu-like symptoms, they're gonna send every one of those patients information to Department of Public Health and they will make the determination who gets tested. If they say no, the doctor is gonna to continue to assess the patient and only if that patient is admitted to the hospital here, then the hospital will do an independent test through a private firm. Now those are where I believe it's taken about six to seven days or longer now to get back. But that is the only time that someone's gonna get tested as of today. You meet DPH and CDC requirements, or you're admitted to the hospital and the CDC or Department of Public Health says no, the hospital is gonna test you. Chef Terrell, what have you got to add? Uh, just imperative that, um, you know, if you reach out to 911 for anything, whether it's for a, emergency, a medical emergency or if it's for a law enforcement related emergency, the dispatchers are gonna be asking you questions. So don't think they're prying, don't think they're trying to get into your business or nothing, but they wanna know for, my folks, the PDs uh, protection and for the fire and EMS, the paramedics protection, <clears throat> to know if you've been sick, had a fever, been around anybody that's sick, left the country. So there's several questions they're gonna ask you. Um, you know, first they'll dispatch the call, then they'll come back and ask these questions. So it's imperative that you, you know, let them know if you've been around someone um, <clears throat> and share that information. So if one of our officers shows up and you've had a fever, then they're gonna be donning a mask before they, they interact with you and they're gonna ask you to come outside the home. They're probably gonna ask you to come outside anyways. So that's that's one big thing. But other and, and that goes for us too. Absolutely. If you can walk and flu-like symptoms, dispatch is asking you one of two things. Either if family members or bystanders are in the house and you can't come outside, they need to leave the room when our personnel enter. And only one person's gonna enter if that patient's stable, dressed out like Courtney was. Uh, to limit exposure, uh, as I said, everyone's getting a mask. But if that patient can walk outside, that's even better. So that's a good point. Everybody's prepared for this. Our hospital's prepared for it. Um, Chad and his folks are prepared for it. Our folks are. Um, you know, limit your interaction. Uh, there's been a couple things. The U.S. Forest Service has closed a lot of the parks, a lot of the walking trails, the Appalachian Trail, Panther Creek. Those places are closed. So don't expect to go out and go walking at those places. Um, I was just talking with a representative from the governor's office checking on the state parks, and they're not looking at closing them right now, but I would be uh, very careful about going out if you want to go to Little Falls or other places and go walking because there's going to be a big draw for folks to get out on this weekend because it's going to be beautiful this weekend. Uh, so be at home with your family, out in the yard, maybe in your neighborhood, just walking, uh, you know, interact with your neighbors. Hey, neighbor! And uh, do those kind of things. And, um, you know, let's continue to practice our social distancing and uh, not come down with a fever or any of the symptoms. That's the last thing we want anybody to have. It is, and Chef Terrell talked about screening. Of course, we've talked about 911 is going to screen calls and ask questions that in the past has not been asked if you've ever had to call for an ambulance before. Our personnel is probably going to be redundant in asking some questions too. We have to be sure. An another layer of that now is here once arriving at Haversham County Medical Center, if this is where you come to and we transport you, we're going to be met by nurses or somebody from the ER on the ambulance bay prior to going in. 
they're going to be asking some of the same redundant questions and i know it's going to be tiresome but it's just a process that we've got to go through so what we're trying to do now is give you information so you know what to expect if you call 911 and have to have an ambulance law enforcement comes it's different than if you've had an ambulance in the past um, it, it's just a different process that we're having to go through now so just please bear with us and understand what our personnel is having to deal with they're doing a fantastic job as they always do both emergency Absolutely. services sheriff's department our police departments and other fire departments in the county every one of them steps up to the plate and they're there if you need any of us you call and if you go to the grocery store or any of the other stores out there don't get freaked out if you see somebody wearing a mask because they might be just protecting themselves. So, you know, don't don't freak out and cause a scene just because somebody's wearing a mask. We appreciate the time as always. I know stay now, safe. Yeah, now Haversham getting questions, our social media, we've got a place on our website under emergency services for Haversham County. Under the county website, if you go to emergency services, there's an email. If you got questions, send it to us. Call the office. We want we're as transparent as we can be. But just know that, that normal operations with some added things are our daily process now. So bear with us and, and we'll get through this. And uh, also, uh, Lieutenant Matt Wirtz, who's my public information officer now, has taken the, on the responsibility of being the public information officer for the emergency services also, since Chad's got other things that he needs to do. And so one point of contact uh, when we have uh, things we need to push out or you have questions, you can relay them to to, uh, to Matt Wirtz, uh, his email address uh, is uh, mwirtz, W-U-R-T-Z, mwirtz at habershamga.com. We appreciate your time. Hope everyone has a great weekend.